Hey everyone, this is Paul with another SQLSkills.com Insider demo video. This one's actually being recorded at home for a change. What I want to do in this demo is show you how to track checkpoints occurring. A couple of weeks ago, I blogged on our SQL Mag Q&A blog um, a question somebody had sent me saying they've got a system where they're seeing I.O. spikes happening every so often and they've tracked it back to checkpoints occurring, but they can't tell which database is actually doing the checkpoints. So I explained how to do it in the blog post, and I want to show you a quick example of doing that here. So what I've got is um, a little script, and of course you'll be able to get the script. The link will be in the, the um, newsletter. So I'm creating a database to play with. It takes a couple of seconds because I'm zeroing out this uh, transaction log. And then I'm going to create a table with a fixed, basically 8K row size. So every time it does an insert, it takes an entire page. I'm going to use the simple recovery model so that whenever a checkpoint occurs the the log clears so my log doesn't get absolutely ginormous and then um, perfmon so i'm going to fire up perfmon and i'm going to add in the sql server buffer manager performance object i'm going to go down here and oops here we go and i'm going to add in the checkpoint pages per second now you can see when as soon as i hit checkpoint pages per second it doesn't give me an instance of uh, the checkpoint pages per second counter. That's because there's only one. There isn't one per database. So if I add that in, okay, it's going to enable me to see when IOs are actually occurring because of checkpoint, but not which particular database is doing the checkpoints. So I've got that running now. And over here in my script, I've got some code, which is basically just going to cause a huge amount of inserts to happen into that table. Now I want to run it over in this in another window. So I'm going to run it in this window so that I can go back to my previous window and do some other stuff. So now I've got all these inserts happening. So I go ahead and look at perfmon again. There's a checkpoint occurring. Okay. Let's change the checkpoint pages per second um, properties so that it's actually doing one hundredth. Okay. So there we can see we did a, a huge amount of checkpoint pages, a huge amount of checkpoint pages, but there's nothing in here that says exactly which database it's actually doing it for. Now, of course, this is a contrived test. We know which one it is, but how can we prove that? And what we can do is we can turn on this trace lag, 3502. So 3502 makes any checkpoints that run dump out information. Now, you need to turn on the trace lag using the minus one switch as well for DBCC trace on so that all threads pick up that trace lag. Otherwise, it's only going to get turned on for your particular connection and the background task that has checkpoints isn't going to see it. You also need to turn on this trace lag here. And what this one does is say for any of the kind of diagnostic information like is printed when this trace lag is turned on, make sure it goes out to the error log so we can actually see it. So I'm going to turn on these two trace lags and I'm going to cycle my error log. And now let's wait for a couple of checkpoints to occur so we can see what information we get out. There's one. Let's wait for one more. It's only going to take a couple of seconds. Checkpoints occur um, every so often when the system thinks that there's enough transaction log that's been generated that it's going to take about a minute or so to crash to run crash recovery. That, that could equate to something like sixty to 70,000 log records. All right, so we've had a few checkpoints running now. Let's go back over here and use XP read error log to look at our error log. So what we're seeing is, now that we've got this trace flag turned on, we're seeing something like this. Every time one of our checkpoints is running, right, we're seeing checkpoint started, it tells us which database ID, and that's going to be our checkpoint test database. It tells us it did it, it flushed out some stuff, it ended. We're also seeing some checkpoints happening for master as well. Now, this is telling us that a checkpoint occurred. We can actually get a little bit more information out of this as well. If we turn on this trace flag, 3504, as well, Let's wait for another couple of checkpoints to happen. Where are we? We're over here. So there's one. Another five, ten seconds, and we'll see another one. Like so. Okay, so we go back and have a look at our error log again. And those last two checkpoints that occurred, if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see an awful lot more information. Okay, we are now getting a bunch of information about what, how many buffers were actually flushed out of the buffer pool because of that checkpoint and what our throughput was. So we see um, there's one of our checkpoints for our database 
going 81 mega second. There's another one about 86 mega second. Um, I could probably make that better because I've got the data and log file on the, the same SSD inside my laptop. I could tweak that around. Now you also get the average write latency. Um, checkpoint will actually throttle itself when the write latency that it's measuring goes above 20 milliseconds. It'll try and throttle things back so as not to overload the I.O. subsystem. When you're doing a shutdown, that number increases to a 100 milliseconds. It will flood the I.O. subsystem a lot more when a shutdown is occurring. So one other thing we can do to look at checkpoints occurring is we can look in the transaction log because a checkpoint causes some log records to be generated. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. It'll complete immediately because it's, this is not being done inside a transaction. It's just a bunch of implicit transactions. If I, can, if I look inside my error log, very first thing here is a begin checkpoint. Okay. Now, where is the end checkpoint? Okay, where it's going to be pretty hard to find because there's all kinds of stuff going on in here. What I can do then is I can search, looking back over here, if I search on the operation column and I look for anything that has a CKPT in, there's three checkpoint log records that can exist. And in this case, I'm going to find just a couple of them. This might take a little try and throw Here we go. So, so in this case, we've got a begin transaction log record. We've got an end transaction log record. And the begin, the, tra the, the checkpoint, sorry, uh, checkpoint log records, not transaction log records. The checkpoint just happened to start in the middle of one of these little tiny transactions that I was doing. So there's actually a checkpoint payload log record as well. So if we scroll across the begin tran, it tells us what time it started. The end tran tells us what time the, the um, checkpoint ended. Right. And what I want to do is I want to show you a, uh, a specific example of what's in this. So what I'm going to do is go back over to my other window and I'm going to start an explicit transaction called Paul so that I can search for that in the, in the, uh, the log. So I go ahead and start my inserts running again. Let's wait for a couple of checkpoints to occur, and then we'll look in the log again. Might take a little bit longer this time for the, the checkpoint to actually occur. It's taking longer for the checkpoint to occur because we're not generating quite so many transaction log records because we're not starting a new transaction for every single one of those inserts that we're doing. Eventually we're going to get another checkpoint though. And as soon as we do, we can go and look in the transaction log. There we go. So this checkpoint is going to take quite a while, longer than the previous ones, because it's checkpointing a lot more information. And again, that took a, a lot longer to occur because, because we're running inside an explicit transaction now, every one of my inserts isn't generating so many transaction log records. It's not having to do a begin trend and a commit trend every single time. So our checkpoint is occurring. We want to wait for the checkpoint to end so we can see the end transaction log record as well. There we go. Okay. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna stop this running. Okay. And I'm going to um, have a look in my transaction log. So I'm looking for the begin tran log record, the commit tran log record, the checkpoint payload log record, and I'm also looking for my explicit transaction that I started up. Now this might take about 30 seconds or so to run. What I'm going to show you is how um, Crash Recovery knows where to start. So Crash Recovery, it looks in the boot page, and the boot page, page number 9 in file 1, is always going to go and have the, it's going to have the log sequence number of the most recent checkpoint that occurred. The checkpoint um, is going to be the, the starting point for Crash Recovery. Um, however, the checkpoint might also have one of these log records. And this log record 
is going to list what is the start of the oldest active transaction at the time the checkpoint occurred. That's where crash recovery is going to have to go back to. So if we look in this checkpoint log record all the way over to the end, we're going to see that it has a whole bunch of information in it. Okay. Now one of the things that we're going to see in here is a log sequence number. Okay. Now it's probably going to be somewhere around this portion of the um, this portion of the log record. But what we're looking for is my begin transaction. This is my transaction called Paul. Over here, where's the transaction name? Right, so this is our oldest active transaction. Okay. So the log sequence number here, 89E6832, should be in this log record. 89E6832. Okay. So let's see. 89, there we go. 89 right there. E683, byte reversed, and 2. So you can see here that this checkpoint log record plays in very importantly into crash recovery. So there was just a quick demo. It's actually a little bit longer than I anticipated. There's a quick demo showing you how to monitor checkpoints occurring, how to see the kind of performance implications of what checkpoints are doing, and how to look inside the checkpoint payload log records to see how checkpoints play into crash recovery. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you all for being SQLSkills.com insiders. Until next time, bye-bye.